This is the Urban Binge Radio. Sunday This 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 is the Urban Binge Radio. Anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, I cannot thank you enough. Um, hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button, guys, and make sure you listen on the podcast, the Urban Binge Radio podcast. Thank you so much. Coretta Scott King's little-known history as an LGBTQ advocate. Coretta Scott King is remembered by most as the wife of Martin Luther King Jr. and a fierce advocate for racial equality in her own right. But did you know she was also a warrior for the LGBTQ community? The civil rights activist has been credited for making room for the LGBTQ community in the civil rights movement, a controversial move in the late 80s and early 90s. She faced backlash for her involvement with LGBTQ rights. Critics believe she should have paid her full attention to racial racial equality instead. I still hear people say that I should not be talking about the rights of lesbian and gay people, and I should stick to the issue of racial justice. But I hasten to remind them that Martin Luther King Jr. said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. In 1983, Coretta asked openly gay poet Audre Lorde to speak at a rally celebrating the 20th anniversary of the 1963 March on Washington. It was considered an unofficial welcome to the LGBTQ community from Coretta, the King Center, and the civil rights movement as a whole. In 1993, Coretta held a press conference urging President Bill Clinton to repeal his don't ask, don't tell policy, banning LGBTQ people from serving openly in the military. It would be 2011 before President Barack Obama repealed the rule. Coretta eventually shifted her focus to legalizing same-sex marriage nationwide. She publicly denounced President George W. Bush's support for a constitutional amendment banning gay marriage and fearlessly fought for nationwide same-sex marriage until her death in 2006. The Supreme Court wouldn't rule for nationwide same-sex marriage until 2015, nine years after Coretta's death. Share to spread Coretta's legacy of inclusion. We are extremely fortunate to have Coretta Scott King with us here today. Mrs. King is one of the most respected women in the world and she happens to be my boss. She is a leading activist. She stood with her husband, Martin Luther King Jr. She's the founder of the Martin Luther King Jr. Center for Nonviolent Social Change here in Atlanta. Many don't know that she was a concert singer. She gave up her career basically, but during the movement, she sang these freedom concerts that uh, portrayed the movement and raised money for the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, Dr. King's organization. I'm very proud uh, to also note that during the 20th anniversary of the March on Washington, Mrs. King led the largest coalition on a human rights issue. And during that time, there were some folks that didn't want gays and lesbians participating, but it was Mrs. King who led the coalition and said, yes, they have a place at the table and made sure we were there. So without further delay, people of the world, listen, think, and act, and welcome Mrs. Coretta Scott King to your stage. Coretta Scott King. appreciate your active commitment to human rights for all people. And I want to express my appreciation to the Atlanta Pride Committee for inviting me to join you today and for organizing this impressive demonstration of solidarity and hope. One of the reasons I wanted to join you today is to affirm my wholehearted support of freedom from discrimination for our lesbian and gay people. I do so because I believe that all forms of persecution is wrong. As, as my husband Martin Luther King Jr. said, I have fought too long and hard against segregation segregated public accommodations
to end up segregating my moral concerns. Justice is indivisible. The civil rights movement that I believe in thrives on unity and inclusion, not division and exclusion. All of us who oppose discrimination and support equal rights should stand together to resist every attempt to restrict civil rights in this country. Another reason for joining together in coalitions is that we share common adversaries. The church burners and the gay bashers drink from the same poisonous well of hatred and male violence. And very often they are one and the same. In this important election year, we share a critical interest in the election of candidates who will support and protect human rights. I would urge everyone who believes in Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream of a nation free from bigotry and discrimination to vote against attempts to deny the promise of America to any citizen. The series of church burnings over the last 18 months bring a timely reminder that we should be very concerned about hate groups and extremists who commit violent acts against minorities. In addition, we share concern about candidates who hope to win, win votes by bashing gay and lesbian people and pandering to the irrational fears and ignorance of the constituents. Let's make 1996 be the year that we put tolerance and human rights for all people in the forefront of our national agenda. Finally, I want to assure you that I will continue to support you in your efforts to rid our country and the nation of all forms of bigotry, of racism, sexism, and homophobia. And now is the time to educate yourselves and your fellow voters about the candidate's position on discrimination issues. Most importantly of all, I hope you will make a commitment to get out and vote on election day so we can turn this country around and create a society where all people can live together with respect, tolerance, and a new spirit of hope and opportunity. With this commitment, together we shall overcome. Thank you and God bless you. Scott King stood for, up for gay rights in support of gay marriage and stated, uh, once stated that her husband would have been also. So uh, she did state that her husband would have been um, a, a proud advocate of gay rights and gay marriage. Uh, although Bernice King 
um, has publicly opposed to that and opposed that her father would would support it. She she actually believes differently. Um, she also did that that march that I remember attending when I was about seven years seven years old because if you guys don't remember, I was partially raised at New Birth a lot most of my life. The church that I was raised at the most was New Birth. Um, but we did do that march. My mom went to New Birth faithfully every Sunday, every Wednesday night. Then when Bible study changed to Tuesday night, my mom was there every Tuesday night. But we were there faithfully. And um, we went to the to the to the march from the Capitol to the King Center and we had to march in silence. But I never knew it was a, um, a, a march against gays from what the news say. Bernice King came and cleaned that up real quick and said that that was not what that was about. And this is why a lot of people were so upset with Bishop Long, because it felt like you're doing these marches, you're preaching against homosexuality, but you're being accused of the very thing that you preach against. So that was the thing that people got really upset about. But for the most part, um, Bernice King, let me say that Bernice King said she did not leave for that purpose. She didn't leave for that reason. But now Bernice King did write a letter in support of gay marriage to Kamala Harris or Barack Obama or something recently um, when Barack was president or Kamala or something like that in support of so um her views have changed her views is one way they've changed i've always thought bernice king was very masculine but it could come from so much trauma happening in her life that she feels like she has to put on a uh demeanor like her father's a a don't step to me type of demeanor don't play with me don't try me because i'm standing up for, for what's right over here um so that's what her demeanor has always been like she got a gun on her side and another one on the other side that like i bust a cap and let's not forget, she is from the ATL Fulton County. Okay, y'all, so <laughs> Bernice King might can go there. King, Elder Bernice King, a lot of things have been going on around in the media about you. And I just want you to share with our listeners from your heart. And and I, I'm here to do that. Um, I, I I know there's been a lot of speculation, many comments about uh, my departure from New Birth. Uh, but I want you, and I'm asking you and, and your audience to uh, take my word for what I'm going to share on this uh, afternoon. And I chose, I want you to know that I chose this forum uh, because we've been here every week yeah. consistently for the past, hear this, eight months yeah. with you and your audience. And um, I know you and I, and I, I trust you and uh, your audience, your listeners, should I say, know me and I hope that they trust me. And so um, I, I feel comfortable here. And uh, what I want to do is, is to just uh, do what you said, share my heart concerning my, my future ministry plans with you and your listeners first. Uh, and let me start by just clarifying and letting uh, all of your listeners and others who've tuned in today to know uh, that after eight years and eight months, that number keeps coming up eight. <laughs> um, my last Sunday as a member of New Birth Missionary Baptist Church um, was this past Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we can talk about that. And we will, uh, because the media is saying stepping down as the elder at Newburgh. When we come back, we'll talk about that, okay? Yes, sir. Can we do that? I'm ready to talk about it. All right, it. we'll do that right here on Praise 1025. Well, we're back, and an exclusive talk and conversation, heart to heart, with Elder Bernice King today. Of course, uh, Elder Bernice King, you know all over the media about you stepping down as elder at Newburgh Missionary Baptist Church. You want to. Uh, and I heard I resigned. Did you? I was a little confused about that because I've never been on staff. I've never been an employee of New Birth. Okay. Uh, I didn't step down because I didn't step up. <laughs> I was already an ordained minister when I got to uh, New Birth and Elder, just as you know, uh, happens to be the title that they use yeah. uh, in, in their particular church. Um, as Ebenezer would use reverend, mm -hmm. so they're the same. So if you leave a Baptist church, they don't say you step down as reverend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but um, I, I am just no longer a member of New Birth. Um, I occasionally uh, worked in the pulpit and uh, preached at, at New Birth, um, but that was the extent of my um, function at, at the church. Uh, but let me let me say this: <clears throat> when I came to New Birth, I came for a season, um, and uh, I, I expected that season not to be quite as long as it was. And uh, what happened is my mother, of course, passed in 2006. She started getting sick in 2005. Um, while I was at New Birth, in fact, uh, the Holy Spirit spoke to me about my next assignment. Um, and uh, I was wrestling, as I did with my calling. It took me seven years to finally resign to my call into ministry. Um, and it's about seven years since the Holy Spirit spoke to me in a service uh, that Bishop was ministering at. Um, and, uh, of course, shortly thereafter, in 2005, my mother started getting ill, so I had to attend to her. Then she passed, and I had to deal with that whole grief cycle. Yeah. Then suddenly my sister passed, um, and I had to go back through another cycle. 
uh, and then suddenly uh, we were involved in a uh, legal um, conflict uh, with our brother. Um, and um, then I got this, you know, direction about SCLC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so through all of this, you know, all things work together for good, as we know, to them that love the Lord and have the called according to the purpose. And this past January, I made the decision um, at, uh, about not accepting the presidency of SCLC, and that's, you know, that was on the record. And at that point, I was faced again with this, this calling, um, this next assignment. And I started really praying and, and meditating uh, over it, and uh, I knew... Uh, in 2009 that it was very present and so for two years um, I had really been heavily wrestling but I couldn't reconcile SELC and this new assignment yeah. together and so once the SELC situation cleared the air I was faced once again and uh, as I prayed I, I, I was released at that point to go to Bishop and we sat down and talked and I told him that uh, um, I have to leave because my you know my assignment that God has on my life I must go and pursue and uh, that I will be leaving at the end of May um, and, and that's uh, what transpired. Of course, you, you know, he gave me his, his blessings and, and supported me in it. Um, and that was this last, this past Sunday was my last Sunday. So that was uh, at the beginning of April when we had that conversation. So what do you say to those people that are listening now saying, wow, it's ironic all this happened at the same time? Seemingly. What do you say to that? Because I want you to really clear that up because some people think I, that. I can't, I can't clear up the mind yeah. of God. Yeah. You know, I have always followed what I believe to be the voice of God in my life. Uh, and I've sought to be obedient to that voice. Um, just as when I left my previous church, it was a very difficult decision, but I had to be obedient to leave and, and go to new birth. And in this instance, it's the same thing. Um, you know, I know that I have a pastoral calling on my life, and I had to accept it. Um, and I am in the process of pursuing that. Uh, and so this was the timing that God gave me at the end of May, and that's where my mind has always been focused. And I believe wherever, whoever you are, especially to your listeners, most of whom are Christians, uh, when you're in leadership at a church, there's a way that you leave. You don't just leave, right. you know. And so I did what I felt uh, was appropriate in le leadership, which was sit down and talk with him, and then gave the timetable as to when I would be leaving. Um, and I didn't, you know, I didn't just, you know, go and then left the next day. Um, you know, I did what I thought was appropriate as as a leader um, in the church, and and that was the decision that the Holy Spirit placed in my heart, which was May 29th, you know, the last Sunday in May, um, and I never wavered from it. Yeah. But when we come back, I want to continue talking about you moving forward. As we wrap up our conversation this afternoon, an exclusive. And Bernice, thank you, first of all, for giving us the exclusive. I really appreciate that. All right. Praise. Thank you. I, I thank you. Go there. I thank you. Well, look here. I thank you all for allowing me this, this time. I thank you, especially G. Uh, and uh, I want to thank the, the manager and the, the program director on uh, my praise ATL family. Um, I, I just thank you for this wonderful opportunity, and uh, I want to thank all the media outlets that are here today, too, um, to, re to report on this and, and thank them for uh, reporting a positive story yeah. instead of a negative story. So what's next? Um, I'm, you know, I'm going to launch a ministry. I, okay. I'm not calling it a church right now um, because I believe that Christ builds his church, and I don't want to do that because uh, what God is showing me um, doesn't look like what people are accustomed to. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to be spending time over the next uh, several months preparing and building the foundation for that. And I'm asking everyone for their prayers um, as I go through this, uh, this process. You know, I come from four generations of preachers, three generations of pastors. Um, and uh, although I've wrestled a long time with uh, stepping into a pastoral function, yeah. um, I have now surrendered. I, I surrendered to God several, several months ago at the beginning of this year. I said I yield. I knew I could no longer fight the mandate on my life. And one of the things he told me um, is that I am to raise up kings for the kingdom. If Jesus is king of kings, who yeah. is he king of? Yeah. Who are these kings in the earth? And so that is the mandate on my life as I, you know, seek to uh, uh, equip, educate, equip, and empower the kings for the kingdom. Uh, and, and so uh, there will be more to come. I ask people to continue to stay uh, in touch with my Be A King Facebook fan page. Um, it, it, we will be on Twitter. Um, and uh, then my, my website, uh, we will, I'm at BerniceKing.com right now, but we will be rolling it uh, out later in terms of the name of what it is. Uh, but let me just say this. Um, my, my, uh, Eight years at New Birth, eight years and eight months, um, I was tremendously blessed by the ministry of Bishop. Um, and I went through some very difficult seasons, as I shared in the beginning parts, uh, with my, the death of my mother and then my sister and then the whole S, uh, the, uh, the um, situation with my brother and the SCLC thing. And so I, as I said to him, and as I want to say today, I want to thank him and the New Birth family for all of their love and support uh, during the time that I was uh, 
at New Birth and, and all of their prayers, and I, I appreciate it, and I know that they will continue to keep me uh, in their prayers, just as Ebenezer is a part of me, as my foundation, and the uh, Greater Rising Star Baptist Church, the church where I serve as an assistant pastor for 10 years, uh, uh, and then now New Birth. They are all a part of me as I go forward and establish the work that God has called me to do um, to oversee the people he assigns me to, and I know it's a remnant. I'm not into numbers. I'm into discipleship uh, because we must raise up true disciples of the kingdom of God uh, so that the king, kingdoms of this world can become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And that is my mandate as I go forward. So thank all you listeners. Thank you, Rodell, once again, and Praise 1025. I love you and appreciate you. And we will be back here next Tuesday yeah, for Praise Descendants. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, God speed with you as well. And yes, as always on Tuesdays, we have Raise the Standard Tuesday with Elder Bernice King. And we look forward to continuing that segment here on Praise. Uh, we've enjoyed you and the listeners have enjoyed you. I already spoke about it um, and I have it down here again where um, Bernice King views. I want to just state that her views on homosexuality are no longer um, her views uh, that she had before. So nobody has to worry about um, Bernice King um, not liking gays because I'm pretty sure um, a lot of people first thought is she don't like gay people. No, that's not true. Okay, I'm going to go down here and we're going to go read exactly um, what it says. Well, she's had a lot of legal issues come up against her. Uh, March Against Same Sex on December 11, 2004, King participated in a March Against Same Sex Marriage in Atlanta. This action was in contrast to the advocacy of her mother, Coretta Scott King, and her older sister, Yolanda, both longtime outspoken supporters of gay rights. She was joined by senior pastor at New Birth Missionary Baptist Church, Bishop Eddie L. Long, who said in a written statement that the march was not to protest same-sex marriage, but to present a unified version of righteousness in justice. At the same time, the march at the same time of the march, King said she be she had become a spiritual daughter of Eddie Long's, and the issue of same-sex marriage legalization had left many divided. The question is, how do you overcome that pain, she said. It may be the wedge that stays with us for a long time. We have to get to a place where it does not become the most defining issue of our time, is what she said. She incorporated the King Center and the inter eternal flame at her father's tomb into the march. The King Center denied her permission to begin the march at her father's tomb and accused her of doing so to provide support for her own personal cause and to enhance her personal standing at Newburgh. The event was also criticized by gay rights organizations which stated it betrayed the legacy of her father. Chuck Bowen, a, spokespo a spokesman for Georgia Equality, stated that he was surprised to learn of the march and quoted saying, I think it's very sad. I think she's abusing the good name of her father, Dr. King, and the work he did creating equality for all Americans. Um, so she's had her own uh, personal views, aside from her mother's, aside from her sister, um, regarding her thoughts and her own feelings um, on homosexuality and gay rights. In 2005, she led a march to her father's grave site and at the same time called for a constitutional ban on gay marriage. She once said to LGBT supporters that her father did not take a bullet for the same-sex marriage people. Um, but there's no quote, but it says here, During Atlanta's 2012 Martin Luther King Jr. Day rally, King included LGBT people among the various groups who needed to come together to fulfill her father's legacy. When speaking at Brown University in 2013, King made a statement regarding her beliefs about the origins of marriage. I believe that family was created and ordained first and foremost by God, that he instituted the marriage, and that's a law that every that that he instituted and not that we instituted. And about the origins of same-sex attraction, I also don't believe everybody was born that way. I know some people who have been violated. I know some people have unfortunately delved in it themselves as an experiment. King has publicly stated that her father would have been against gay marriage. Her statement was in con contradiction of her mother, Coretta Scott King, who was an avid supporter of the LGBTQ community and publicly stated her husband would have also been an avid supporter of the LGBTQ community. However, by 2015, it appeared that Bernice King had changed her stance on the matter of LGBTQ and same-sex attraction and marriage as she issued a press release as the CEO of the King Center supporting the Supreme Court's same-sex marriage ruling, which, like I said, was Barack Obama's um, term. 
Uh, so yeah, her views on homosexuality and gays have changed. She's never been with a man that that we know of publicly, and she does not have children. And she um, is she, you know, she she's she's masculine. You know, she she um, has this masculinity, this hardness about her. Um, so a lot of people. I believe um, it's not far from a lot of people's mind to um, it, it think that she is gay or may like or be attracted to women because of how she carries herself and how she walks and how she stands and how she, her demeanor is. It's a lot about her that makes you feel like she is a Navy um, veteran, you know, like she comes from the Navy um, or like she come from um, working in the prison or something like that. You know what I'm saying? That's her whole demeanor. But like I said, her stance on homosexuality has changed. She is no longer uh, thinking the way she used to about homosexuality. I just want her to say what she feels her father would stand for. Like her mother um, spoke out and said, I wonder what she thinks now um, that she is, you know, no longer at new birth. If that was being an influence on her and was new birth an influence on the way of her thinking, was it, you know, now can she say that if that was, I don't know. I have many questions for Dr. King, if he was still alive, but I have a lot for Bernice King as well, as she is still alive. Um, never thought about speaking with Dexter or Martin, although I've met both of them. I've met Coretta Scott King. I've taken pictures with Coretta Scott King, but I've never, um, really had a conversation or spoken with Dexter or Martin. Um, but I know Bernice King very well. Uh, I've introduced Jay to Bernie's King. He's met Bernie's King. He's also met and had held several conversations with Kendra King, which is the cousin to Bernie's King um, and a very close, dear um, mentor, another mentor of mine that that is I'm much closer to than I am um, Bernice because as you know Bernice is very busy so I'm close to her but she has other people in her camp who you can you know attach to and Kendra is somebody who I just I really love and Elder Drain who is with uh, Bernice all the time they were all ordained elders by Bishop Long so Elder Bernice King Elder Drain and Kendra King she was not ordained but she is now a minister with her husband um, Momin Elder Momin who I believe is Minister Momin now anyway <laughs>
Dr. Martin Luther King was received in the emergency room at St. Joseph Hospital at approximately 6.15 p.m. Well, I just was told that he had been shot. The report I got was in the shoulder. It was serious. That was the report I got from Reverend Andrew Young. He is in the emergency room and he is in critical condition. And there was, oh, 20 or 30 doctors. And they tried external heart massage and his respiration muscles were paralyzed and everything else was paralyzed. And he would have lost all his sensation. He still didn't have any blood. You understand it's really a massive wound. I've never seen a wound like this. 7.05 p.m. April 4th, 1968, Martin Luther King was pronounced dead.
with me now because I've been to the mountaintop. I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you. But I want you to know the night. That we as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. This is a CBS News special report. Dan Rather reporting for CBS News from New York. The Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. was shot to death by an assassin late today as he stood on a balcony in Memphis, Tennessee. Dr. King had planned to lead another civil rights march in Memphis next Monday. This, 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 this is the Urban Binge Radio. Thunderflow. Children are called 
song who y'all always sleep on like i always say is b slay that is b slay okay the person that sings my intro the person that does the exit for the urban bench is b slay now for this show sunday flow show of course as you know you know the voice that is kier kiki sheared for this show but any other show on the urban bench or on rebel tv on rico Blucci is i mean rico live is b slay okay opening and closing period no if and or what's about it okay that was b slay living in the world make sure you guys go check out his band camp okay i can't stress it enough if you want to hear the music everybody be like who that last song is who that it's called disguise by b slay and the first one is called established by b slay um those are that's the intro and the exit disguise is the exit established is the intro and that song was called living in a world 
living in a world was the final song um i've tried to mix them up a little bit so that you guys uh so that it doesn't take away from the original piece i really apologize if i did take away from the original piece but um that's what we're going to do over here we're going to play music and we're going to inspire people um right here on youtube and right on my podcast rico live on youtube and the urban bench radio on the podcast make sure you guys check it out the urban binge radio podcast where we discuss viral topics hot jams new artists fun and informative interviews and conversations this is your new stop for the hottest trend in urban culture news two shows one podcast the urban binge show and sunday flow show powered by the urban binge The Urban Binge Radio Podcast. Listen anywhere podcast can be heard. Haters like, am I going to hell for the things that I could wear? I ain't going to hide my blessings when I know. 